the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment. Can we pray for a few minutes? I believe in prayer. And we'll spend a few minutes praying in the Spirit so that the Lord will open our hearts to receive even as we explore the word of God so lift your voice and let's together just bless him praying in the spirit edifying ourselves Are you praying? Skate a lot of a catapros, a devil and a catapra. Majesty. Kine balanta skata prete kete balakata prata kata balada balada bakus. Ila parus kete prete kete balada balakata bros. Outside pray. Inside pray. Following online. Lift your voice as we pray in the spirit. We're building capacity. The Bible says, if you turn aside in a day of battle, your strength is small. Shata pakata parata kata prata kete bele de pakata. Skite perente skele barus kata pranda kete balasa te pariata kata pranda kete bele kete. Skite salanta skete barato sa de pranda kete bala. Imanta salam sa se de balata barato skete prende kete bala da ba. Aprante celebratus que te prende que te balata And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Don't be tired, it's part of the conference. Kata pakata prende kete prosir, ete prende kita balakata pradis kete bela neba. Shenatas kete balakatu sibe. Bacatus, get a brand, get a parada balada bacata, bread again of an animal. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you will bring down, lie you. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming up.
two encounters in Genesis chapter 28 the Bible says that Jacob found a place in the night to sleep and he did not understand the covenant that was around that place the Bible says whilst he slept his eyes were opened and he saw angels ascending and descending the Bible never said they were coming to him they were coming to those who were making a demand on their ministry they were passing him he was seeing them yet he was not impacted by their presence when he got up he said the Lord was in this place and I knew not the next time he would have such an experience is in chapter 32 of Genesis this time around he had gone through seasons of pain in the house of Laban he had understood the value of God's presence after he dismissed his wives his cattle the people said a man came to him and he held him he said leave me for the day breaketh he says I will not let you go unless you bless me and he says what is your name he said Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob for as a prince you have had power with God and have prevailed he touched the hollow of his thigh and blessed him and the Bible says the sun arose and he called the place Peniel I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved father give me an encounter in this conference lift your voice and pray an encounter that will shift my life my ministry please pray let it be from the depth of your heart for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone that asketh receiveth ye have not because ye ask not Give me an encounter, oh God, that will prepare me to be a mighty battle axe. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, it truly is my joy to be here. We have a lot to do. I'd like you to be very sensitive. Um, this is a very major part of the conference now many things will be happening we'll have some time to teach and then we'll wrap up tonight with an impartation just be patient and let your heart be open the bible says while peter yet speak these things the holy ghost fell not on them that were around on them that had him it didn't fall on those who were around the vicinity it fell on those who had him praise the name of the lord it is always the hearing of faith and the working of miracles. So I'd like for us to be opened and let's trust the Lord to help us in Jesus' name. Please be seated if you can. We began to discuss in the morning on fundamentals of effective ministry. Just a quick recap for those who were not here in the morning. The goal was to examine basically the idea of ministry from the standpoint of the kingdom we observe that um, the body of Christ has been plagued with all kinds of wrong ideas of ministry ranging from standing behind the pulpit holding a mic leading a Christian organization organizing programs that none of these things in themselves is ministry an activity can only be called ministry if and when the motivation behind it is to reveal Jesus and to glorify him are we together that ministry basically refers to kingdom service and it is not limited to spiritual activities around a pulpit or around a church any contribution any participation any activity any effort that is channeled towards the revelation of the Christ and the glorification of the same is called ministry your marriage can become ministry if kingdom come is represented in that union raising of your children is called ministry if you raise them to the end that Christ be revealed in and through them your money can become ministry your giving the difference between a donation and ministering with your finances 
is the motivation so the lord cultured our hearts back to an understanding that it is not the activities that make ministry you can be involved with activities but not be in ministry we observed how that the prophet isaiah began to prophesy right from chapter one and for the first five chapters there's no record and mention of him being fake and yet in heaven there was still a call who shall go for us and who shall we send when isaiah saw the lord he saw the level of of insufficiency and that coal was used to touch his lips and he says now your iniquity is taken from you then who shall we send he said here am i send me and god didn't say you are already sent that means while he was doing a lot of things that we call ministry heaven was still calling who shall go for us praise the name of the lord and that ministry is not limited to the fivefold i know that this is a pastors and leaders conference but the core idea of ministry has to do with representing the interest the agenda of god in whatever capacity the unique expression of the fivefold is because they are the ones mandated as the gifts that build the ministers ephesians chapter 4 paul was mentoring the church in ephesus and he began a discourse that led to what we now call the five or fourfold ministry whichever perspective you want to look at it from let's turn there to start for tonight ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 the bible says he that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens that he might feel all things and then the bible says next verse he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers these men are not the ministers these are the gifts he gave to men the bible says he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men he gave men to men and then he says next verse 12 for the maturing the word perfecting there means the building up to maturity the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ 13 says till we all come into a mystery in the spirit called the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ the result the Bible says that we henceforth be no children toast to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men and cunning craftiness wherein they lie in wait to deceive so the fivefold ministry was uniquely called and gifted to the body to help in that process of maturity it's important that we understand that if you find yourself in the fivefold ministry yes you are also in ministry technically but in reality you are the gift that prepares men to represent the purposes of god effectively and that your assignment does not stop until we come into a point called the unity of faith are you seeing that many times we rest when we have crowds god gave us the condition that must be met for us to know that we have done well it is not when you have hundred branches it is not when you have your name is all over the town you're doing well based on human parameters the bible says you should never relent until you find out that the body of christ attains this state called the unity of faith that maturity and i can tell you the body of christ has done well but we are far from that state that means every one of us regardless of our achievements organically speaking we must be up and doing to contribute to this reality is a burden in the heart of the father that the body of christ believers be matured are we together so i want to start this afternoon by discussing doctrine we said we're going to discuss doctrine and discipleship doctrine and discipleship doctrine is the mystery behind stature and maturity please look up the bible tells us 
that God's goal for his body, for believers, is that they not only become effective members of a denomination, they not only become loyal followers of spiritual leaders, that God's goal is that through the ministry of these gifts, the body of Christ will come into a state of maturity. So the assignment of the man of God, the assignment of a minister of the gospel primarily is to use the tool that the Bible calls doctrine. Doctrine is the name given to the course curriculum that makes believers matured. You have to understand this. There is a definite course curriculum given to believers by which we attain maturity. We are not left to our opinions in building believers. In secular education, we do not call people doctors, engineers just by freelancing opinions. There is an exact body of knowledge they submit to. Are we together? Yes. We are diagnosing the problem with the body of Christ now. That the reason why there is a difference in spiritual understanding. You meet two believers at random and ask them to engage in a conversation. They most likely will end up fighting because of the extent of divide. They will agree that we serve one God. They will agree that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. But now begin to allow them to communicate. And in five minutes, they are irritating one another. Their terminologies, what they believe, what they do not believe. That state was produced by an incorrect mentorship from leaders. If you call a medical doctor from Port Harcourt here, you bring another medical doctor from India, you bring another medical doctor from China. You bring another medical doctor from Maiduguri. If you put them together, have never met themselves, leave them in a conversation, the margin of error will be very small because it was the same curriculum that was used to build them. If we are having several believers with different opinions, the problem is not the members. We need to go back to examine what script we are using for the mentorship of those believers are we still together what we do in the body of christ is largely opinions and personalized dealings let me tell you how error comes to the body error comes to the body because of the way god treats men you see if god is calling me into an apostolic ministry or a prophetic ministry the character of his training will be such that number one there are other aspects that i need in my life that will not be captured in that training god will focus on the core areas that become the pillars of my ministry i give you an instance if god is raising me to be a prophet chances are that he will not teach me anything on administration and excellence and leadership my training will revolve around visions the gift of the spirit the ministry of prayer are we together now and because my dealing is so with god i will assume that is all i need two mistakes will come from that dealing if i do not leverage on the other supplies in the body of christ number one is that all the people i will mentor i will mentor them to respect only the dimension that was priority as far as my training is concerned any other dimension that comes i will teach them subliminally or directly to reject it because it was not captured in my training just because it was not captured in your training does not mean you will not need it god allowed that limitation intentionally to force you to depend on the body are we together now please follow very carefully there is a danger still extending on my point with personalized dealings personalized dealings have to do with your personal work with god there is a way god trains me as a person that may not be applicable to any other person it's a product of my level of yieldedness it's a product of a backlog of my experiences my level of transformation or otherwise my personality those are factors that define how god trains me 
personalized dealings are good for your personal growth but they are not sufficient for you to ship them to become doctrines there is a condition for a truth according to scripture to be called a doctrine number one it must be represented in the character of the old testament number two it must be captured in the earthly ministry of jesus that body of knowledge must be represented in his teaching or in his work number three we must see that body of truth represented in the life and the teachings of the apostles any truth that does not pass this litmus test cannot be called a doctrine so if because god has vetted my heart and has found that having five cars may derail me he can give me a unique instruction and say in your whole lifetime do not have more than three cars it is not a doctrine it is his it is his gauge to help me to be efficient based on the vulnerabilities he knows now because i obey him i will excel based on that obedience so when i'm mentoring people and they ask me the secret of my success i will tell them i have only three cars whereas there is a kingdom financier who needs 12 for the sake of the gospel i will make him feel guilty for being obedient to his call because he has to subscribe to my template to be called successful are we following yeah so this i'm showing you the evolution of error and imbalance in the body it didn't come because the ministers are wrong it came because we did not prioritize doctrine above experiences so largely what is communicated is our personalized dealings and because there are results to show it's difficult to say you are wrong are we together so from my three cast example find out that i'm efficient disciplined based on that now someone who are mentoring wanting to be like me regardless the scope of his assignment will reject anything if he hears anybody saying wow i have 10 cars and five of it is given to missionaries he will most likely fight that person because his men his mentor's template did not allow for that possibility if God has called me to be a prophet, for instance, and then I do not leverage on the supplies of the accurate teaching ministry to build. Someone can come and then I want to preach and I say, look, I don't have time for that. There's time to prophesy. And I begin to prophesy and people are receiving miracles. You see that now because of the excellency of the results and the charismatism around the gift i will neglect the teaching ministry so all the people i raise will not place value on the teaching ministry the day they go somewhere and there's two hours of sound teaching they will call it nonsense they will say this is a dry powerless service because the templates that was given to them did not place priority on teaching Are we together if i'm an arrogant man of god who has no respect for other gifts in the body of christ subliminally all the people that that are under my tutelage and mentorship as i insult other men of god to their hearing as i tear down people to their hearing they begin to learn these things and in loyalty to me they will follow that same pattern you see that now so you have a, a generation of people having the ripple effect of the error of mentors we carry our personalities and we blame the holy spirit for it otherwise we would have been unashamed enough to say look this one is not the holy spirit it's a weakness in my personality i can work on it our ego may not allow us to admit so we call everything that happens around our lives we credit it to the holy spirit when it is clear that he does not have a hand in many of them if i have anger problems it has nothing to do with the holy ghost it's just a level of unrenewedness in my heart i must be unashamed enough to admit that even though he's using me he's not endorsing that weakness hmm. are we together so we have different versions of these limitations scattered across the body of christ from pride to lack of seriousness with the word to accuracy in the word with no grace for performance 
to exaggerations of truth to bitterness the scattered across regions the major problem is not the devil the major problem is the absence of doctrinal content in our teachings it's largely an exegesis of opinions but believers were never never supposed to be raised by opinions doctrines must be exalted you are not a disciple and you are not doing discipleship if what you are teaching is not doctrine please write this down are we still together the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means teaching it means instruction comes from the latin word doctrina it means teaching it means instruction what is doctrine generally speaking doctrine refers to a set of beliefs that are accepted and taught a set of beliefs accepted and taught it also refers to a body of teachings or instructions a body of teachings or instructions a body of teachings or instructions deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 2 please let's look at a few scriptures that show the power and the excellency of doctrine the course content it says my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon a tender herb and as the showers upon the grass so the doctrine is like rain that comes upon a little plant and causes it to grow doctrine the rain that comes upon a young believer and helps the believer to grow to stature and maturity if you're with me please say amen, amen. very very important isaiah 29 and verse 24 let's just look at three scriptures for time's sake it says they also that erred in spirit shall come to understand and they that murmured shall learn doctrine those who have erred in spirit will come to a point of understanding when they learn doctrine jeremiah 10 and verse 8 jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 8 but they are altogether brutish and foolish the stock is a doctrine of vanities there is such a doctrine called a doctrine of vanities a doctrine of vanities it means that when you sit under the mentorship of that body of information it will lead you to a mundane life that has no profit as far as god's standpoint is concerned a doctrine of vanities let's look at doctrine in the ministry of jesus because jesus is our pattern man the bible says to look on to jesus every time the bible says look on it means observe to learn it doesn't just mean look with your optical eyes let me show you what it means to look it means to look intently to observe ready to receive ready to learn acts chapter acts chapter 4 acts chapter 4 please i need to explain to us very quickly what it means to look blessed be the name of the lord acts chapter 3 i meant to say acts chapter 3 please let's start from verse 1 please pay attention the key verse is verse 5 but let's run through the first five verses now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer the bible says being the ninth hour verse 2 it says and a certain man pay attention please lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask arms and of them that entered into the temple verse 3 who seeing peter so he was already seeing peter who seeing peter and john about to go into the temple asked for arms for and peter fastening his eyes upon him with john said look on us what does that mean the meaning of that statement look on us is found in verse 5 every time you say look on us in scripture this is what it means and he gave heed to them expecting to receive 
that's what it means to look every time it says look on us give heed expecting to receive are we together looking on to jesus giving heed to him expecting to receive matthew chapter 7 please let's run through a few scriptures please be patient matthew chapter 7 and verse 28 matthew 7 and verse 28 and it came to pass the bible says when jesus had ended these sayings the people were astonished at his doctrine jesus communicated doctrine an exact body of truth that was supposed to mentor these young disciples who would later become the apostles of the lamb matthew chapter 22 and verse 3 let's see how many we can touch very briefly just to establish the fact that jesus was not um matthew chapter 22 and verse 33 33 matthew 22 33 the bible says when the multitude heard this they were astonished at his so what did he teach them doctrine doctrine an exact authorized prescribed body of spiritual knowledge not opinions jesus taught doctrines mark chapter 1 and verse 22 mark 1 22 let's see if we can touch on two or three more scriptures the bible says whilst he taught they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes in the temple he taught doctrine you see the reason why the products that came from jesus were matured and powerful because even though he was the son of god he taught doctrine luke chapter 4 and verse 32 luke chapter 4 and verse 32 luke chapter 4 and verse 32 the bible says they were astonished at his doctrine aha uh -huh. for his word was with power that means if you teach and what you teach ends up just as a lecture something is wrong with it because if it's his doctrine there is also in it a power dimension are we together just because it is a teaching ministry does not mean it should not come with power the bible says they were astonished at his doctrine why because that word in the doctrine was with power power to change power to lift power to transform power to heal power to deliver last scripture john 18 19 john 18 19 we're examining the ministry of jesus the high priest then asked jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine look at this when they wanted to fight jesus their attention was on two things number one his followers number two his message this was what threatened the entire sanhedrin council they were not afraid of jesus as a person something about the quality of his teaching was tearing a revolution what is this man teaching it was affecting the minds of the people and so they wanted to know number one what are you teaching number two who is hearing you this is a strategy the devil will come after you in ministry when he comes he wants to know two things number one what is the content because he knows that words make he knows that truths ideas transform so before i attack that church let me know if it's worth my attack what are you teaching if you're teaching opinions he said you're already defeated you just continue i will leave you to think you are making progress there are many people who don't have attacks in their lives it does not mean they are doing well it's a sign that there's no point attacking them the error in doctrine has already made you defeated he asks Jesus of his disciples and he asks of his doctrine. Two things that will scare the devil over any church. What are you teaching? What is the content of the truth you are using to build believers? You see that? Because the information that you bring will shape their understanding and eventually begin to influence the systems. 
Jesus never sat in a house of parliament yet he was almost these guys were afraid they said there is something about this man the content of his information let's look at doctrine in the ministry of the apostles are we still here acts chapter 2 and verse 42 Acts 2.42 And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The Bible says, this is the early church. They continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. This is what made them mighty. This was the scope of their spiritual activity every time they gathered. They listened to a thorough exegesis of doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers acts chapter 5 and verse 28 acts chapter 5 and verse 28 now watch this when they caught the apostles their concern was not just the people the human bodies the threat to the government of the day was the doctrine this was what the devil did not want saying did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name and behold ye have filled jerusalem with your doctrine more than branches more than programs what was influencing the territory was doctrine there is something you are teaching that is making Ambroba stop stealing. There is something you are teaching that is transforming society. How come the men in a territory are suddenly becoming responsible? Corporately, there is something. You can trace the growth of society to the doctrine that fills that place. You can trace the deprivation and the retrogression in society also. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. The quality of the life of people within a territory, among other factors, is a reflection of the quality of the truths that the spiritual leaders within that territory communicate. You see, Africa is a very spiritual continent. On average, every week, the average believer, including an unserious believer, submerges himself in some sort of spiritual training. Either a Sunday service, Please don't feel i'm not you remember that this is what we're talking as men of god is that true we're examining a few things so this is not this is not a call to sarcasm whatsoever we're just challenging ourselves to rise to higher dimensions there is a sunday service maybe a tuesday service a wednesday service most likely a night vigil some kind of spiritual activity happening all week that means if i handpick a believer who has been within a christian circle for two three four years and i ask him basic questions about the christian faith he should be able to rise in defense of that truth otherwise we must hold the pastor accountable what is the content of your teaching not necessarily the insincerity in character may be a sincere person They have filled Port Harcourt with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon her head. Can you imagine that? Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. I want you to see why the apostles were effective. The Holy Spirit we have today is the same Holy Spirit they had. The God they pray to is the same God we pray to. But we are not seeing their result because there is a missing link. The doctrine they communicated is largely not the doctrine that we're communicating. And the emphasis that they placed on doctrine, we might not be pressing that far. Now I beseech you, brethren, Paul is speaking, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. I like Paul. He's not mentoring based on opinions. He's saying, listen, listen. Everything you do should be referenced to this doctrine. There are people who cause offenses and division. How do we know that what they are saying is divisive? With respect to the doctrine that is being taught. It is based on doctrine. We can have the audacity to tell someone you are right, you are wrong. 
it is based on doctrine we can judge prophecy and say it is true you came back from heaven but something is questionable about this encounter you cannot just say i don't like what you are saying there has to be a reference to your defense the reference is doctrine the average believer is confused and cannot tell whether a thing is right or wrong you see that because that doctrinal reference is not there let's look at two more scriptures first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 in fact i think paul's 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 epistle to timothy has about the largest in the new testament now about the largest compendium of this word doctrine 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 because he was mentoring his son in the gospel here's what four verse one says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith the bible says and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons so the devil too has his mentorship system he can make you become something exact there is a body of truth whether you choose to serve god or satan is the same way you will grow doctrine there is something called the doctrine of devils a good person can teach the doctrine of devils you don't have to be bad or fake you just have to be ignorant and there are many many sincere doctrines in the body of christ that need to be edited from the light of scripture you see there are four principal ways i wish we had time there are four principal ways the bible recommends that we know god knowing god is not a mystery there are four biblical channels only four channels if you ever want to know the god of the bible there are only four channels the bible recommends number one is scripture the first authorized channel that can help anyone know God is scripture. Are we together? Scripture reveals the character of God. Scripture reveals his modus operandi. So you know God when you study scripture. You can meet a believer who did not know anything about the Christian faith. And get that person saved and hand over scripture and teach that person scripture and he can grow in the knowledge of God scripture number one number two the names of God we know God by exploring the dimensions of him captured in his name you would wonder why he's called the God of Abraham Isaac Jacob Rapha Sikenu all of these names were dimensions of him the moment the nation of israel saw that dimension revealed they preserved it in a name so that every time their children wanted to learn that dimension they would draw that name from the archive of their experience and say look we never knew that god could move like this but when we saw it we said we will not waste this experience we have to archive it for our children so they saved it you can use the names of god to learn him Number three, the third way that we know God is through the person, Jesus, the Christ. The Bible calls him the image of the invisible God, calls him the word, the logos of God that has been made flesh. So I can know God when I study Jesus. I hope you know, theologically speaking, we're ministers of the gospel until Jesus came nobody could accurately say they knew god there was a lot of haziness and confusion about god even among the prophets they credited both good and bad to god there was no standard no reference so one of the assignments of jesus was not just to come and die he came as a manuscript and a marking script he came so that we will use him to start editing our ideas about god everything god said jesus manifested whatever you said god said that jesus did not do you are in error so your assignment is to look onto him and begin to edit what the prophets and the law and every other person said about god the things that superstition said about god we compare it jesus came as a revelation of the father 
so i can look at jesus are you seeing why the bible was so detailed about his earth work because it does not want you to miss any information everything about his earth work it was more than a story it was god in action so he's saying study study how he treated children study what he did on crusade grounds what did he do when he saw the sick if it's true that god said i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my loving kindness we can only verify if he's lying or not by looking at jesus how far did jesus go to prove the love of the father he died greater love had no man than this than a man laid down his life so we know god did not lie because jesus proved he was true all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me how do we know god is not lying by looking at jesus the last enemy that can be destroyed in this earth realm is death whoever destroys death by leaving this earth and coming back into it at will you see there is a law nobody dies and comes back by himself it has to take someone in the earth to call you in but jesus showed that god was all powerful indeed by dying and calling himself back it was his entry back into the earth that led to psalm 24 lift up your heads O ye gates the gates were surprised why are you saying we should open nobody on earth is calling you when you were coming from heaven a prophet has called you but now you are out of the earth and we are not hearing anyone call you and he says don't mistake him just because a baby was called this man who is coming now is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle are we together so you know god by looking unto jesus if all you know about jesus is that he just came and died for sinners you've missed a major part of why he was here his first assignment was to correct our aberrated view about the father how many of you have heard stories about people and you had all kinds of ideas until you met them or you met those who were very close to them and you felt so disappointed so broken and you said i'm sorry god forgive me i was told this ceo is not a good man now look at this five of my children now have jobs because of him and you go back and you keep repenting and say god forgive me that's what jesus came to do if you study jesus you know you are knowing god when there is a lot of repentance in your life because you should find a lot of gaps in the things you have blamed God about. Jesus. When it was time to feed 5,000 with two loaf, five loaves and two fish, he didn't say those who understood or heard me move one side. He fed everyone. So when the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, that even the king is fed by the increase in the field, it is true. Jesus came as the logos of God. The word made flesh, the logos. The, the, the word logos is the Greek word thoughts. The intent of a man that desires to find expression. Everything God was thinking, Jesus was living. Next time somebody says, I want to know you God. There's no mystery about it. What many people mean is I want to be caught up in the realm of the spirit. You will most likely meet familiar spirits. God's authorized channel is scripture if you cannot respect scripture that you can see it's not an angel that is invisible that you that's the law remember and then the last way we know god is through your experience in that order it is important but only the fourth your experience job said i have heard of you with the hearing of the ears now my eyes have seen you experience you can build a track record about god by yourself oh talk to our mothers and they will tell you there is something about god they knew not by preaching when the woman was about to die because of her pregnancy 
she called upon the name of the Lord and rolled on the ground and that baby lived. So every time she sees another woman who says, look, I'm about dying, she says, sit down. Let me tell you something about God. I didn't go to school, oh, but there is a song I raised in 1975. Every time I am in trouble, when I raise this song, the nation of Israel had songs that were like codes. When it was clear that defeat was imminent, they didn't just sing praise and worship. You are good and your mercy if they started singing that song against you no matter how you were winning it was a code for victory please sit down this is not even what we're teaching you know, remember what we're talking about doctrine i only digress because we are dealing with the issue of knowing god is god helping us the knowledge of god you want to know god scripture the names of god jesus your experience it's impossible to pass through this and not know god mm -mm. Mm -mm. hallelujah so back to doctrine one last scripture hebrews 13 and verse 9 hebrews 13 and verse 9 the bible says be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have profited them that have been occupied therein. He's talking about several things. Paul was largely correcting a lot of errors, a lot of imbalances, and he began to teach them doctrine. Who is a disciple? A disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of scripture. A disciple is one who accepts and helps in spreading the doctrines of scripture. When we follow Christ, we follow him because number one, we accept and we believe the truths. Are we together? Yes. And then number two, we help in spreading it. So when the Bible says in Matthew 28, let's look at it. Now you will understand what the Bible is saying. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18. Here's what Jesus said to us. Matthew 28 from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All authority, the word power there is the word exousia, authority. All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 on the strength of this information go ye therefore and teach are you seeing now he didn't just send us to preach to preach means to declare to teach means to explain to guide to mentor to bring into comprehension that's what it means to teach go ye and teach all nations all nations does not mean all countries all fields of endeavors are we together now all of the mountains go there and teach baptizing them in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and whilst you are doing this be assured that i am with you all way whilst you are doing this you can be sure that my divine presence is going with you even to the ends of the earth. Colossians chapter 1, Paul speaking to the church in Colossae from verse 28 and 29. Paul, the assignment of presenting everyone, he says, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man that in all wisdom we may present everyone mature or complete or whole in Christ Jesus, 29. It says, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his walking, which walketh in me mightily. Paul said, look, all my travels and everything, you see me visiting the church in this, the church in that, correcting all kinds of things, imbalances, impartations, travels. All that I'm doing is I am striving to see to it that the body of Christ and those committed to my care, that I'm able to present them complete in christ if you're still with me please say amen. amen so the course content 
for the believer's education is called doctrine every believer that comes under the influence of the doctrine of scripture will become something exact something predictable regardless denomination regardless the approach to ministry now we may not always agree in terms of our modus operandi we may not agree in terms of our personalities here and there but there are certain truths that are called the foundational pillars of the christian faith if you do not believe this you are not a christian if you do not teach it you are also not a christian There are certain things common to all women. Black, white, yellow, African, Spanish. There are things common to men. Regardless location, regardless territory. That's how it is. When we talk about unity, unity is not uniformity. No. We will never be the same verbatim. Our experiences with God our levels of transformation the systems of mentorship that we are under will create those differences but regardless what the divide is there are certain foundational pillars of the christian faith hebrews chapter 6 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundations of six of them number one repentance from dead works number two faith towards god verse two number three the doctrine of baptisms number four of laying on of hands number five the resurrection of the dead number six eternal judgment and he prays a serious prayer in verse three and this we will do if God permits there are foundational pillars please listen very carefully you see believers do not just grow because truth is taught truth has to be methodically arranged like a building to be able to mature the saints are we together now please don't feel bad don't feel insult insulted I apologize if you do so but then imagine with me for instance that someone just gets saved completely not a christian and the first message he hears is on prosperity you see chances are that that person's christian experience will be wrecked into pieces because he's not learned how to crucify the flesh he's not built character are we together now exposing that person to that body of knowledge the truth is not it is truth but it will kill him it's not sequentially arranged he's not even equipped for the attacks that come by reason of that level of blessing we must not just build believers we must build believers methodically line upon line truth upon truth tomorrow is sunday millions of pulpits around the world will be filled with men and women passionate men and women who will be teaching can we begin to make these adjustments by focusing on doctrine what we largely do is just a topical exegesis of the word and for many people i understand how burdensome it can be to preach and come up with messages so sometimes you sit and say ah what have i not preached for a long time in this church i'm tired right now i have three services let's try faith all right so you listen to a message or two just go online get one or two scriptures put things together and you know the fearful thing about the grace of god is when you stand up here it will look like you've been studying since last year because you are under the influence of that grace that grace can cover shame in a tremendous way but it's not an endorsement of your current state you can stand and preach something off script completely it may even be one of the most powerful messages you would have preached that year and you go back repenting before god and say lord thank you for covering for me me and you we know that i don't have an idea of what happened on this stage come on pastors Do you know the reason why you fear teaching on the altar? Do you know the reason why you feel emotionally bullied by another man? 
because you are teaching opinions when you are teaching doctrine the truths don't come from you it is the explanation and the exegesis of it that comes from you so there is no need to fear the body of truth is exact you finish and start again listen when it has to do with the knowledge of god our exploring god is infinite even in heaven we'll keep learning him but as far as the excelling of a believer on earth is concerned the body of truth allocated for our growth and maturity is finite you can cover the curriculum and start again and not feel guilty for going back it's not that you don't have new messages so the pressure is that ah let my members not say there are people teaching volume 7 part 1 volume 8 part 5 and you are here it seems like you are struggling with something so that pressure pushes us into saying look what is the new thing i have not said save yourself that stress there is an exact body of truth that builds and provided that is what you are teaching no matter how simple find rest every other thing garnished on it is just the the psychological prowess the intelligence and all of that but at the basic level, everyone should be able to mature believers. Once you can understand and you can teach, the course content is given to you already. Doctrine. So there is no excuse. There's no such thing as, I don't have the gift of teaching. I'm not really a teacher, you know. These guys are the ones who teach. And then because of that, we said, you know what? Don't worry, I even want to teach. Worship team, come. Raise a powerful song. Let's start praying. And then, no, 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 no. no. There are a few ministers around the world, this nation and across Africa. They teach in about the most simple ways sometimes annoyingly simple but you look at the quality of men that they have raised do you know why because the content of their teaching is true they are methodical about it whether the lecturer is in uni Lauren, whether it's a yoruba lecturer whether it's an Igbo lecturer a south south lecturer a northern lecturer the person's accent his level of understanding etc is not is not too much to alter the curriculum so the same students can be taught by an Igbo lecturer a white man coming from the u.s a visiting professor from the uk and then people within that region and regardless the students you are sure that after four or five years you are going to graduate a predictable kind of people their accents may differ their abilities to explain there are lecturers respectfully speaking who are quite on the conservative side they can talk as if they are talking to themselves others are very engaging and happy those things are just added advantages once the truth is there the students will learn and their results will show they have learned it fine rest men of god the pressure that we are putting on ourselves to attain onto certain levels it is true that some of these gifts and some of these engracings come with um, a level of charismatism around it, I confess. So once these kinds of things happen, there is, that, there is that drive to want to be celebrated, I understand. But find rest. Tomorrow, go on your pulpit and teach doctrine with power. Teach it with truth. Teach it with conviction. When I was in the seminary, when I was in the Anglican seminary, we had something called the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed, now I'm not, I'm not, I know that I'm speaking to people across different denominations, but I wish there was a way you could find for me and project what we call the Apostles' Creed on the screen. If you can find that thing, media, I promise to give you a big hug. That for me represents about the most accurate or at least commendably accurate presentation of the believer's creed. This is a summary of what we stand for. This is who a Christian is. It's important we know that. Some of you here are owners or directors or senior executives around companies. And you have all kinds of creeds is that true 
that you compel your staff to learn to indoctrinate them to understand why they are here whether it's a creed towards efficiency a creed towards excellence team spirit whatever it is please find it for me if you can i apologize for putting you under this inconvenience but it's important so we're dealing with doctrine and discipleship we are not in ministry truly if we are not teaching doctrine do the believers under your care are they still in doubt that jesus christ is god do they know that hold on before we begin to teach all of the mysteries of this and that just calm down leave that we're going there do our members know that jesus is lord do they understand redemption can we random pick one member and bring him up stage and say give us your understanding about the substitutionary sacrifice of christ which is the foundation you will be amazed at how many of our workers respectfully speaking deacons and even some of us men of god we may not be able to articulate redemption how about prayer how about faith the bible says in this kingdom the just lives by his faith how about the body of christ how about resurrection do our members know that jesus is coming back do they know the benefit of being saved the reason why there are hardly altar calls on our pulpit is not because we are bad it's because we ourselves need a reorientation about the value the bible says there is no other name given unto man under heaven by which we must be saved are we together what of the holy spirit do our members understand the holy spirit do they understand the priesthood ministry of a believer do they understand the responsibility that makes for kingdom advance thank you thank you let's give these people a big big god bless you <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that right there is a very serious creed i hope i'm able to see everything as clear as i want to but let me attempt to read it am i boring you this is a pastor's conference i know impartation is coming but you just pay attention the oil is useless when there is no vessel remember it is the vessel that gives credence to the oil i believe in god the father almighty it says the maker of heaven and earth is that true and jesus christ his only son our lord that is true but i may edit that now because he's not the only son again he was the only son but now he's the first of we the begotten you see that now he's not god's only son now mm -mm. he was his only son but now he's called many sons into glory he was conceived by the holy spirit how shall these things be seen that you know not a man he says the power of the highest shall overshadow you oh beautiful thank you born of the virgin mary he suffered on their pontius pilate was crucified dead it's important you know he was crucified he did not just die if he just died he could not have been a cause because the law says cost is every man who hangs on a tree if he died on the ground he would be a dead man he needed to die on the tree so the crucifixion of jesus is a major aspect of the christian life he died you have to believe he died if he did not die then there is no way he would have collected the keys that we gave adam revelations one i was he that was dead and now he's alive and i hold the keys it was his death that gave him the entrance when sinners die where do they go to so the only way he had to go to hell being a righteous man was to become sin so that if he died it will now give him the the entrance to go to the place of the dead are we together now he died as you and me what would have been our future so he went there and when he met satan the bible tells us paul was teaching us the the drama that happened there in hades 
that when he got to hell my goodness did you know that satan did not even understand the strategy when he died all of a sudden celebration was to start in hell and then they see this man jesus christ went to hell without the assistance of the holy ghost i hope you know that he went as man in the strength of man that's what made him the second adam he went there and the bible says all the demons and principalities were on him forcing him to bow what is him bowing acknowledging lordship because jesus being the express image of the father the word are we blessed this is what makes us different from different religions there are many religions that teach what we teach too this is the dividing line do you know why we need to restore doctrine to the body of christ otherwise after many years of laboring we will not know who is a christian again and the devil is an expert he will keep bringing pseudo christian expressions until we lose the conscience. it's already happening to many people So he went and when the legal claims of justice were satisfied, the Bible says he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. And he did not just stop there. He now went to Satan and he said, give me the keys. What keys? The keys that came from Adam through Eve to him. Are you seeing that now? And when he collected the keys, the Bible tells us, that there were saints who were there in Abraham's bosom. I don't want to bring any controversy, but your Bible people, you know. And Apostle Peter taught us that he went there and preached to them. When he preached to them, he gave them a chance to believe. When they believed, he opened the prison gates. He said, follow me. When he resurrected, it's in your Bible. He was the first begotten. And then other saints came through the streets of Jerusalem. They saw them. The hymn says, up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. I know it's old school, but not every old school is old. Are we blessed? So when he resurrected a woman came and met him this solves the problem once and for all should women be in ministry the first person to see christ resurrected was a woman he says go and tell jesus go and do ministry go and tell he's the one who instructed her go and tell There is a protocol to it though the bible always says they do it in subjection but to negate now when it has to do with the ministry of the word there is neither male nor female there's neither jew nor gentile it's one new man in christ are we blessed now please pay attention these are the truths that give you a defense system against satan the bible says no weapon fashioned do you know what it means to fashion to fashion means to write a summary of your strengths and your weaknesses and build an arsenal from your weakness so when the devil wants to attack he does not just come he fashions the weapon what do you not know what is not known in your church oh you don't know this you don't know this build the weapon after this weakness it says no weapon fashioned Are we together when jesus christ resurrected listen to me the bible says he was raised up for our justification what does it mean to be justified to be declared not guilty but his resurrection was not all there was if he was if he resurrected and he stopped there we are saved from sin but we are still in trouble because he needed to go to heaven to perform his high priestly duty remember he said no don't touch me don't corrupt the program i need to ascend to heaven so he went there both as the lamb and as the high priest the bible tells us because according to the jewish tradition the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement so for it to be an eternal atonement the ageless lamb he now became the lamb he used his own age now 
So for you to know how long the atonement is, is to know the age of the lamb that died. You see that now. And when he was done, a coronation service was held for him in heaven. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand. That was a coronation service. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Permit this mind to be in you, the Bible says, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although being God did not consider it robbery, this and that, but that he died the death on the cross. And the Bible says, wherefore, by reason of this, God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. The name is an office. He gave him an office. And that office was exalted above every other name. That at the mention of that name, every knee. Listen, if you don't know this, your members will not be powerful. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. It's not what you are saying. It's the understanding that supports that activity. That releases the power. Please let me have four people. Just come. Let me use you. Four, any four gentlemen, come. Watch this. Just stand here. Look at this, everybody. Do you know what Jesus did? Just, just stand facing me. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Imagine that I am a PhD holder, but the limitation is that I have PhD alone. Are we together? And then my assignment is to make all these guys PhD holders, but they don't have the strength to go through that system. So what I did was I gave up my PhD. I went back to nursery school. Remember, I always had it. I went back to nursery school and then I just told them follow me closely I started come guys and then when I now got to masters just when I was going to write the PhD exam I said hold on before you give me that exam guys everything I'm going to be doing is for us I changed the name from me to us now I wrote that exam the examiner did not even know what was happening as soon as I got the PhD PhD appeared on all of them and I took them here come I took them back to where I originally was so you will ask so you had PhD why did you leave it and get it again because of these guys I had it alone but I didn't want to have it alone that's what Jesus did everything he now has he always had but the question is alone so he came back gave up everything and started afresh this time around with you in covenant this is what Paul understood he says we have been raised up and we have been made to sit back where he always was but now together with him above far above thrones dominions every name that is named not only in this world but in the world to come this is the gospel Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.